Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Huddy Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we are at Form Next 2024. We have got loads coming for you. Uh, we are sponsored this year by Sunlu. Take a look in the video description for a link and a discount code. Just to be clear, it's an affiliate link, helps the channel out. Let's take a look at some of the amazing tech that is on display at the show. Here we are at the Mimaki booth, taking a look at what you guys are doing in multicolored resin printing. I'm here with Michael. Tell us a little bit about the company to begin with. Okay, so uh, Mimaki is a company that was based in Japan, and we were very famous for a lot of 2D printers. We have decades of experience with uh, all kinds of printers, like industrial products, and uh, printers that use UV curable ink to produce, um, to print directly onto um, products, as well as, you know, big sign graphs, banners as well as textile printers and okay. we took that technology and kind of layered it all up and created uh, a very wonderful uh, full color 3d printer so this is one of two machines you're showcasing at the show this one is <laughs> the smaller one believe it or not um this is doing full color 10 million color resin prints so when you normally see something like multi-jet fusion what you tend to see is a really powdery finish mm -hmm. where your um is that going to focus so what you normally see is a really is a really powdery finish very washed out colors they the color is there but it's almost like it's behind a film yes but what we're looking at here is is three really important parts of this model. One is that the interior of your model is completely white. Yes. So there's only a very thin layer of, of ink that's being deposited on the yes, outside. Exactly. And then we have this stage. So this is the pre-wash stage. Yes. Talk to me about how you're doing support material because it's, it's basically zero interface layer at that yes. point, right? There's no scarring or anything. Everything comes out afterwards pretty much like this after yes. the process. So tell me, tell me about how your support's working. So as you can see, the support material is kind of like this buttery material. And basically, the big uh, feature about the support material is that it's dissolvable in just regular water. So there's no real mechanical need to remove supports from the model itself. So this buttery material, you can put into like an ultrasonic cleaner to speed up the process, but just add water and uh, basically it dissolves and it leaves no trace as you can see here. So, I mean, I just want to be clear. So this is, this is how the models are, are yeah, coming so out, right? We're making these little snow globes on the other machine and that's kind of what it looks like, you know, before it's all dissolved. And uh, you can see it's kind of a wax material and that serves as a support for each layer. And this allows us to be able to do all kinds of interesting shapes. And because there's no mechanical removal of the supports, yep. um, it so it allows you to do very, very fine detail with very, very accurate colors. Exactly. And there's no interface scarring or any support scarring, and there's no mechanical stress to remove the supports after the fact. Because So you can do really fine detail. Yes. What sort of layer heights are you doing? Uh, so layer height is down to 22 micrometers. Right, okay. And uh, in order to properly express color, um, we got detail down to 0 0.7 millimeters. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. and that's allowing you to do things like this, so like a cyberpunk style uh, yeah, uh, remote, remote control. control. Um, obviously this is completely solid, mm -hmm. and underneath this top layer, it'll just be white, white ink, yes. right? What kind of build volume is the smaller one doing? The small one is 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters by 70 millimeters tall, which is why we have the name 2207. Right, okay, that makes sense. I mean, and, uh, that's not a small, I mean, Contextually, that's not a small build volume for something like this, right? Yes, yes. Under normal circumstances, you'd expect these to be in the 100 or sub 100 mm -hmm. build volume size. Yes. So even though the, the other machine you've got is very large, very large, this is not in and of itself a small build volume. Yeah, it's this not so type small. of material. Mm -hmm. Especially for uh, like figures and small objects, uh, small prototyping, it's the right fit, it's the entry level model. So I'm assuming you would couple this with something like um, the full color 3D scanning that is now oh, coming yes, onto yes. the market as well. Meaning that you could take a product, 3D scan it, produce a color STL file, put it into this, and I'm assuming you have your own software and everything yes, so yes. It's on the back end, and then it just 
reproduces the part. Yeah, and right? I have some samples I can show you with yeah. using the scanner. But, so we got this little box here, and uh, I actually scanned myself. That's a wide stance, my guy. Yeah, that's I'm <laughs> no, I was going to say, no one's pushing you over. Uh -huh. <laughs> But we use a full body scanner and uh, just it produces this kind of data and I'm able to print it really quickly on uh, this printer. So again, when, when you normally deal with full color multi-jet, right, which this, I appreciate this isn't, it's a different type of tech, but when you're trying to do full color, you get almost like a washed out effect. So you get, it, it looks like it's almost got a film of something and it's because it's infusing powder with resin and you're limited on how so on how small that laser beam can actually be and still be effective but you're not doing that you're 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 basically creating a color resin layer around a solid white mm -hmm. model yes and then you're in again you're encasing this in that in that wax to mean that there is no in, there's no interface layer there's no support scarring there's no surface scarring whatsoever and there's no real post processing the post processing is wash it wash it and then it's done. So is there a yeah. curing process after oh, washing? There's no curing process, no. It just, it's just you wash it, and then it you try it, and yeah. then it's done. Yeah, and for some clear parts, if you really want the clear parts to look like glass, uh, you have to do some polishing to get rid of some of the layer pitch yep. movement. But otherwise, it's that. I can also, I know you're Warhammer fans. This yeah. is something more fantasy style. And another cool feature about this printer is that we can print in clear ink. Right. So you can get clear there. That's so uh, I don't know if you can see this in the, in the image there. But what we're looking at here is you've got the flame orange in the center, but then it's surrounded by translucent resin as well, because this could do translucent clear resin. Um, and then we've got full detail. We've got a flesh tone that has gradient to it. We've got, we've got pipping and, and, and you've got everything, everything in it is colored to a respectable level. This is, if you were to produce this, it, it would be something you could you could just sell, right? It, it doesn't have to, you don't have to then go back and do sort of touching up or, or again with the, with the multi-jet fusion, it's just not, it's not clear enough. It's not defined enough. It's exactly. not sharp enough. And, and then we've a, got guys like a this. A 3D scanned man. Okay, so this guy was also 3D scanned. And as you can see, you can see the checker pattern on his shirt. Yeah. Down to that layer. And even if we were to scale down, the figure down to HO scale or N scale models for like, you know, rail, model railways, you still preserve the detail. So like apart from the fact that, so, okay, so again, this is incredibly impressive, but I think what's probably a bit more impressive about this is the price of this particular machine. So let's be really clear. This is not going to be in a, in your front room, right? This is not a, this is not a go in your garage kind of machine. What this is, is something you build a business case for yes. around return investment, right? So how long will it take me to be able to pay off this once, I, once I've shelled out for the initial asset? What's the price tag on this machine as it sits? It goes, uh, it's really case by case, but the average price we see is about 35,000. Well, so that's US or Euros? In Euros. In Euros, so 35,000 Euros for a production ready, not small build volume, that produces parts with no with no scarring. You can do complex geometries. You can do 10 million colors. You are producing production ready. So how fast is this going? Sorry. So like to do something like like him, mm -hmm. like the full size, like say full size, the big the big version of him. Is he? Pr he's not printing vertically, or is no, he he's printing? printing? You want to print them like uh, like laying down. Right. Okay. You, fine. you want to limit the the Z height as right. much as possible. Okay. To improve the this will be a couple of hours, probably around. Uh, well, I'm not. I kind of forget, but we're on eight hour print or so. so. So is this similar to MSLA, where if you had ten parts or twenty parts, as long as they were all the same Z height? Does the, does the time vary much in that uh, it regard? Doesn't, it doesn't vary. It runs and passes by left right. to right over the x-axis. So if you were to stack them like this, yeah. say I can stack two on the bed like this, it would take the same amount of time, so the, around so the, the same amount of time. The, real, you, the real thing yeah, is the yeah. same. So stacking in the y-axis is what kind of... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's similar to MSLA in that regard. Yeah. That, that what matters is how, t is how tall it is in Z, because yeah. that's what really dictates the amount of speed yes, and layers yeah. you but can put together. But for us, it's always trying to keep it in the same pass. Yeah. Like the, I mean, we'll, we'll put up some images of, of, of everything else that's currently being, that's currently being, that they're showing at the booth as well, because some of the stuff they've produced is crazy. Yeah, like we gotta show you some of the art on the other side. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's production-ready stuff. I mean, this is for, for prop making or for, 
or for just set dressing, or even if you were making, you know, uh, you wanted production grade materials for promotional stuff. It's it's not slow. It's color accurate. It's you're not sacrificing layer height. And thirty five thousand for an asset of this size is not in and of itself a particularly difficult yeah, business yeah. case, it's, especially if you're going, especially if you're making figures around this size, yeah, or that that Warhammer style scale, or even this scale. The ink cost is not much, but you're not really using many CCs of the inks. So the really the use case for this is really that kind of uh, small scale like board game figures yeah. and uh, you know kind of diorama models, you know, yeah. scale models. I mean, again, we'll, we'll show you some imagery of what else is around the show and what else we've got going. But I mean, th this is in and of itself an incredibly compelling business case for being able to do full color, accurate, high detail models contextually quickly mm -hmm. and, uh, and producing those to again be production ready. There's and then, this is what we're printing right now. Just the samples we're giving away to people who come by at the booth. So these are little, little, little clogs. Cute, just little like, so again, you know. I want to be clear about the geometries on this that aren't simple, right? So this is printing flat. So we've got an instep in the middle, but then the shoe itself is actually hollow. So there's support material that would have been in here. And, then and there is, it and then it's water. dissolved in water. There's absolutely no scarring inside of this at all. This is just ready to go. There's no post-processing, there's no sanding, there's no coloring. Obviously you can, you can see the blend. You can sand if you want, well, but we, could, we haven't yeah. sanded these. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, this is this is smooth. Like this yeah. is this is as good as most resin parts that I see that come off of an MSLA machine. But we're talking blended color, not just separate colors, but, but color blending that moves through, which is where the 10 million colors come in. Very impressive. Thank you very, very much for taking the time. I can't wait until we get one on the channel. <laughs> It'll create a really, nice, uh, a really nice emotional barrier between my wife and I, because she will be really angry if it turns up. You have to print yourself an army. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a new wedding ring, something like that, you know, which I probably need. <laughs> Thank you very much for the time. No problem, sir. Catch you guys in the next video.